All right. Hello, guys. How are you all doing today? This is Denar Michu, the epitome of empowerment, also known as the hottest youth speaker on the planet, here today with your great advice for teens. And as you can see behind me, our topic today is focus. However, I want to say focus on your future. Now, our picture we have behind us, you see a young man, a uh, young guy with a stethoscope in his ears. Now, he's focusing on his future as a doctor or somewhere in the medical field. Now, regardless of where you're at right now, or no matter where you're at, I'm talking about in high school, middle school, or if you're a college student listening to this, I want you to focus on your future. Focus on that thing you're going to do that's going to bring you fulfillment for your entire life. Focus on that thing that you're going to do that you're going to do with such great joy and that's going to provide for you as well as your family. Focus on that thing that you would do for the rest of your life for free, but you do it so well, people will pay you to do it. That's what I want you to focus on your future. Now, I'm not just going to say focus on your future and leave you hanging out there on the limb. There's two things I would like to share with you in regards to focusing on your future. And I'll use myself as a personal example and show you how I became a youth motivational speaker and how focusing on my future led to this. Now, there are two ways or two approaches you can take or two paths, if you will. The first path I want to talk about is exposure in your interests. Expose yourself to as many options or as many career paths or opportunities as possible. For myself, when I was in high school, we had a program in school called OJT, which stands for On-Job Training. Now, once you have a certain amount of your credits completed, you have some open slots for classes. And you will go on OJT or On-Job Training to get exposure to different career paths in which you are interested in. Well, for me... I got exposure to the funeral industry. Yes, I said it, the funeral industry. Mortuary science is actually what it's called. So I started doing my OJT at a local funeral home and I became very intrigued and very interested in the field. And because of that exposure, I wanted to further my education more into that area. Now, I matriculated into what's called Gupton Jones College of Funeral Services in Decatur, Georgia. I graduated with my two years degree and then later I did my internship and I was in the field of mortuary science as a funeral director. Now, here's the good thing about focusing on your future. There's this 11 commandment I like to recite to myself and that 11 commandment is jive not thyself. <laughs> I'll say that again in layman's term. Don't kid yourself. The good thing about getting exposure on the various career choices is you will find out whether or not this is something you really want to do. Now, if you don't like blood, I don't think you should be a doctor or yet in the field of mortuary science. You get my drip? If you don't like heights, I don't think you should be trying to build high skyscrapers as a construction worker. If you don't like babies, you shouldn't be a pediatrician or working in a nursery or working at a daycare. Hopefully you get my point, which I know you, you all are very smart, so you get my point. But getting exposure to different career choices will help you to figure out if that's something you want to do or something you, 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 you don't want to do. And when I was going to the funeral home, I realized this is something that I would like to get more information about. All right? So that's the first path, being exposed and being uh, exposed and following something you're interested in. Now... I know you all are saying, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. You just said you're a youth motivational speaker. What does that have to do with the funeral home? Well, we're going to put the funeral home on pause for a moment, and I'm going to show you how they tie together. The second path that you can take is something you're good at, something that comes natural to you, something that it would be considered a passion and if you can follow that passion, that passion will then lead to a purpose, hint, hint. So, what's something you're passionate about? Well, I chose the first route, and I went with what I was, 
what I was exposed in. However, my passions led to my purpose in which I'm doing now. Now, what was my passions in high school? I was passionate about helping people, passionate about improving lives, passionate about leading. I never forget, I always tried to follow people and do other things, and yet people were interested in following me and, and putting me up on that, that level as a leader. Wow. I was passionate about helping other lives. And as a matter of fact, I was a peer mediator. I got to find my badge it's somewhere around. I still have it from high school. Do you believe that? I was a peer mediator. So back in high school, I was always involved in improving the lives of others, helping people, personal development, personal development and improvement. How do my passions and the funeral home, how did that help my purpose? Well, that's something that I always wanted to do, but I never knew that I should have pursued that because of my passions. So I went after exposure and my interests. Now let's hit play on my exposure and my interests. Play. Now, while at the funeral home, this was my service. Giving back to the family, preparing the bodies for the funeral. But I realized that at the funeral home, and this is a part of my story, how I became involved in the youth speaking. At the funeral home, I realized that a lot of youth were coming through there. A lot of youth were dying based on poor choices, drugs, alcohol, drinking and driving that led them to the funeral home or because of natural causes. However, at that moment, after seeing all of those, well, moments, should I say, after seeing all of those teens come to the funeral, through the funeral home, I realized that I had a passion to help teens. As a matter of fact, my mission is to help teens and young adults live the life that they deserve. Live the life that they deserve before they end up to the funeral home. You know, I was always told that the wealthiest place on this planet is not in the Far East, where we have the oil. Or in South Africa where we have the diamond mines. In fact, the wealthiest place is actually the cemeteries. Because in the cemeteries, we have a lot of dreams that have died with people. My goal is to take those passions that are in teens and young adults and help them to live those dreams. So now you see how my passion to help and my exposure and my interest merge together. In fact, let me share one more story with you that I thought was very, very important that helped with my speaking and helping. Well, when I made the transition from leaving the funeral home to try something new because I knew there was more for me in my life, I started working for this, actually for myself, it was this organization called Quickstar. And they were like this online business connected to Amway, which you sell products. And it was a multi-level marketing company. And you had to go to people homes and you had to set up this whiteboard and you had to show them this business plan. And you, you, the whole idea was to set up this business plan and show them how they become, how they can become independently or financially independent from selling these products and duplicating the system and setting up other franchises such as this. Well, I went to hundreds of people showing this, this, this beautiful plan. And I got some people to sign up, but that's not what they were excited about. They were ultimately excited about how I made them feel, how I made them feel, excuse me, how I made them feel after the presentation. The way I spoke to them and the way I connected with them and the way I inspired them and, and I gave them that new breath to go after their dreams. So then I knew that another interest was put together with my passion to help individuals that led to my purpose, which is my future. So in focusing on your future, I want you to focus on the things that you're passionate about. I want you to focus on the things that you're interested in and, and, and get exposure and then merge those two together and then that's gonna be a phenomenal future that you can lead, that you can live. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. In other words, when you say you want to do something and you do it, you're successful. I said I wanted to travel the United States and impact the lives of millions of teens. Well, you know what? I'm.